In the depths of history, shrouded in the mists of time, lies a tale of a city lost to the world. A story of a civilization so advanced, so prosperous, it was said to be the envy of the ancients. This is the fabled city of Atlantis, a name that has captivated the human imagination for more than two millennia. First chronicled by the ancient Greek philosopher Plato around 360 BC, Atlantis was depicted as a utopia of unparalleled wealth and knowledge, a beacon of progress that abruptly vanished from the face of the earth. Plato's accounts are our primary and most detailed source about Atlantis, infusing the tale with a tantalizing blend of history and mythology. His writings describe Atlantis as a powerful and advanced kingdom that sank into the ocean in a single day and night of misfortune. Despite its popularity, the existence of Atlantis remains a mystery, a subject of heated debate among scholars and historians. Is it a mere legend, a cautionary tale invented by Plato to illustrate his philosophical ideals? Or was there a real city, a real civilization that inspired the myth? Over the centuries, numerous theories have been proposed, with proposed locations spanning the globe from the Mediterranean Sea to the Caribbean, from the icy coasts of Antarctica to the sun-drenched isles of the Pacific. But what if we've been looking in the wrong place? What if the clues to Atlantis's true location have been misunderstood? misinterpreted? What if the city of Atlantis, rather than sinking beneath the waves, was swallowed by the sands of time, its remnants hidden beneath layers of history and geography? But what if the city of Atlantis was not just a myth, but a reality hiding in plain sight? What if the key to unravelling the mystery of Atlantis lies not beneath the ocean, but on dry land, in a place few have considered, the vast, unexplored expanses of northern Africa? The next chapter of our journey takes us there, into the heart of the Sahara, in search of the truth behind the lost city of Atlantis. The search for Atlantis has led many explorers on a wild goose chase, but what if we've been looking in the wrong place all along? The tale of Atlantis, the mythical city swallowed by the sea, has captivated the imaginations of historians, explorers, and dreamers alike for centuries. The majority of theories place this lost city somewhere in the vast expanse of the Mediterranean or hidden within the enigmatic depths of the Caribbean. These are regions filled with ancient maritime civilizations and mysterious underwater formations seeming to fit the bill for the location of a city lost to the sea. But let's take a pause and consider a different perspective. What if Atlantis wasn't swallowed by the sea, but rather consumed by the sands of time? Yes, you heard it right. There's a compelling theory that suggests Atlantis may have been located in an entirely different setting, Northern Africa. As unconventional as it sounds, this theory has gained traction over the years. The proponents argue that the geographical descriptions provided by Plato, the ancient philosopher who first mentioned Atlantis, align more closely with Northern Africa than with any underwater location. They point to the Richat structure, also known as the Eye of the Sahara, as a potential site. This gigantic, circular feature, visible even from space, bears a striking resemblance to Plato's descriptions of Atlantis's concentric rings of water and land. Moreover, they argue that swallowed by the sea might be a misinterpretation. In ancient times, sea was often used to denote any large body of water, including lakes and rivers. Thus, it's plausible that Atlantis was not drowned by an ocean, but rather consumed by a desert, its remnants hidden beneath layers of sand. Could the sands of Africa be hiding the secrets of a civilization lost in time? This theory, like all others surrounding Atlantis, remains unproven, but it serves as a reminder that sometimes, in order to uncover the truth, we need to look beyond the obvious and question the accepted. Because who knows, the truth about Atlantis might just be waiting to be discovered in the most unlikely of places. A new perspective emerges when we turn our gaze towards the vast expanse of northern Africa. Here, nestled amidst the turbulent sands and unforgiving heat, lies a geological marvel known as the Rishat structure in Mauritania. Some call it the Eye of the Sahara, but others, they whisper a different name, Atlantis. The Rishat structure, a symmetrical, bullseye-like formation, spans 40 kilometers in diameter. Its concentric circles of rock and sediment eerily echo the detailed descriptions penned by Plato over 2,000 years ago. He spoke of Atlantis as an island, comprising alternating rings of sea and land, with a central island protected by the encircling waters, 
a description that resonates with the Rishat's layout, but the connection runs deeper than mere topographical similarity. Plato also wrote of Atlantis being beyond the Pillars of Hercules, an ancient term for the Straits of Gibraltar, placing it in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, while the Rishat structure is not submerged, it is indeed beyond these pillars, and was once much closer to the sea before the shifting continental plates sculpted the world as we know it today. What about the downfall of Atlantis, you might ask? Well, Plato spoke of earth-shattering earthquakes and floods that swallowed the city in a single day and night. Studies suggest that a catastrophic event, potentially a seismic activity, could have caused a rapid change in the Rishat area's topography. This could have led to the city's demise, its grandeur buried beneath layers of sand and time. When we piece together these clues, they paint a compelling picture. One of a city lost, not to the depths of the sea, but to the whims of the desert. The Rihat structure in Mauritania, with its unique geographical features and alignment with Plato's narrative, emerges as a potential candidate for the location of the lost city of Atlantis. Could this be the site of the fabled Atlantis, hidden not beneath waves but windswept dunes? Only time and further exploration will tell. Like any theory, the African Atlantis is not without its skeptics. There's a rich tapestry of counter-arguments that question the African Atlantis theory. Some of the most compelling objections come from the fields of archaeology and geology, both of which play pivotal roles in our understanding of the past. Let's start with archaeology. The theory of Atlantis in Africa, specifically the Rishat structure, is somewhat at odds with the archaeological record. You see, no definitive archaeological evidence has been found in the Rishat structure that could conclusively link it to a lost ancient civilization. Despite numerous expeditions to the site, there have been no discoveries of artifacts such as pottery, tools or writings that would suggest a complex society once thrived there. Without such tangible proof, many archaeologists remain unconvinced. Then there's the geological argument. The Rishat structure, also known as the Eye of the Sahara, is a naturally occurring geological formation. It was formed over hundreds of millions of years through the process of erosion. Skeptics argue that the concentric circles that make the Rishat so visually striking are not the result of human design, but rather the work of Mother Nature herself. Moreover, the geological timeline presents another challenge. The Rishat structure is estimated to be approximately 100 million years old. That's a far cry from the 9,000 years ago that Plato, the original source of the Atlantis story, stated. The vast discrepancy in these timelines adds another layer of doubt to the theory. Lastly, skeptics point to the fact that the Rikat structure is located far inland and not submerged under the sea, as Plato's account suggests Atlantis was. This geographical mismatch is another point of contention for those who question the African Atlantis theory. While some dismiss this theory, others believe that with further research, we could unearth the truth. So is the lost city of Atlantis buried under the sands of Northern Africa? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Let's take a moment to dive into the arguments that have surfaced. On one side, we have the believers convinced that the historical clues and geographical evidence point directly to Northern Africa. They argue that the details given by Plato the ancient Greek philosopher who first mentioned Atlantis, align perfectly with the Rishat structure, a geological formation in Mauritania. It's circular, it's surrounded by water, and it's in the right place. For them, the answer is clear. Yet on the other side of the coin, skeptics remain unconvinced. They argue that there's simply not enough concrete evidence to tie Atlantis to any one location definitively, they point out that Plato's descriptions could fit countless places around the globe and that the Reichat structure lacks the ruins or artifacts you would expect from such a historically significant city. To them, the theory is just that, a theory. The truth is, the lost city of Atlantis has become more than just a place. It's an idea, a symbol of mystery in the unknown. It's a testament to our human desire to explore, to learn and to understand our world. The quest for Atlantis has led us to discover new archaeological sites, to question what we know about ancient civilizations, and to push the boundaries of our scientific knowledge. In the end, whether we ever find a sunken city in the depths of the ocean, or a buried metropolis beneath the desert sands, the search for Atlantis will continue. 
It's a journey that drives us to look beyond what we know, to question what we believe, and to never stop exploring. Whether fact or fiction, the tale of Atlantis remains a fascinating journey into the unknown, reminding us that there are still secrets left to uncover in our world.